Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are Sports Up. Tonight, the Braves open up their final regular season homestand in 2012. And it's time for a little celebration. First, it's for Chipper Jones as he plays the final regular season games of his career in front of the fans who have supported and adored him for the past 19 seasons. And secondly, with just one more win, the Braves will return to the postseason. So let's celebrate, cheer on Chipper and the Braves as they look to keep this magical season of 2012 alive into October. Another beautiful night in Atlanta and a big crowd filing into Turner Field as we begin the final homestand of the 2012 regular season. The Braves are in town and hosting the Miami Marlins. It is, of course, the final homestand as well for Chipper Jones. We hope you enjoyed the tribute to Chipper a few moments ago. A very special night and homestand begins tonight as the Braves make their final push for the playoffs here in 2012. And hi again, friends, along with Joe Simpson and Tom Glavin. I'm Chip Carey. 153 games played so far. But, fellas, the only number that matters right now is the magical number of one for the Braves. One Braves victory means we're playoff bound this year. Yeah, but the uh, in terms of the division, the Braves are still in it too, Chip. Five games back with eight to play. And Washington's got a very tough schedule ahead of them. They've still got games left with uh, Philadelphia beginning tonight. Six of their last name, 6-9 are with the Phillies and three with the Cardinals as well. But things are looking pretty good in that wild card. Yeah, they are. They're standing very well, obviously, in the wild card to win tonight. And they've clinched that opportunity to get into the postseason and, and play in that crazy one-game wild card playoff. But as you said, they're not giving up on the division as yet. Obviously, there's still room left in the season. They're playing good baseball. They feel like they still have a chance to creep up there and maybe take this thing from Washington. But I guess maybe first things first to a certain extent. They want to win tonight, obviously, secure that playoff bid, and then keep their eye on the bigger prize, the division, as the rest of the season unwinds. And who better to pitch for the Braves than the hottest pitcher in all of baseball? Chris Medlin gets the ball for Atlanta in the series opener. Indeed, all of Atlanta, all of Major League Baseball is mad about Chris Medlin. We'll break down his season as we get this final homestand started tonight at Turner Field right after this.
fans excited to see Chris Medlin make his way to the mound for the start of our series with the Miami Marlins. Chip, Joe, and Tom back with you here at Turner Field. And who better to get the homestand going than the hottest pitcher in Major League Baseball? Chris Medlin is on an incredible roll, Tommy. Yeah, he really is. He's the talk of baseball. Everybody's talking about what he's been doing uh, as, as he's gotten into the rotation here for the Braves in the latter part of the season. You see in his 10 starts this season, 8-0 with an 0.76 ERA, which if you're new to baseball, that's really, really good. <laughs> and if you need more proof, as everybody's talked about how hot he is, we've talked about the Braves have won his last 21 starts. But look at those last two graphics. First pitcher in Major League history with... Eight plus wins, nine plus strikeouts per nine innings, and an 076 ERA or lower in a 10th to start span. And in the last 96 and two thirds innings pitch, he hasn't had a multi run inning scored against him. That's unbelievable. Fourth longest streak in baseball. So we'll talk about it all night long about how hot he is, but just chew on those numbers for a minute. And Joe. The Braves are going to be facing a guy who threw a pretty good darn, a pretty darn good ball game his last time out too. A great game, and uh, one of those guys that uh, you wonder how the Braves got any hits off of him. But Nathan Evaldi on the 18th, his last time out, eight innings, a four-hit shutout ball. He only struck out five, but I'm telling you, he could have struck out 15 that night with the stuff he had. His fastball sat between 96 and 98, even into the eighth inning, and he would have gotten a win. But the Braves rallied against their bullpen for three runs in the ninth, and that took him off what could have been a win for him. The Braves did really tear him up, though, in early August here at Turner Field, so we'll see which native Aldi shows up tonight. Both starters are facing the same team in back-to-back -back starts. We'll see what adjustments the offenses make as we get things started between the Braves and the Miami Marlins. The magic number is one. If the Braves win, they're in the playoffs. We'll see if Chris Medlin can lead Atlanta to victory right after this. Atlanta. And Chris Medlin, fellas, is awfully stressed out about his start tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, he can he barely make his way out there. He's so nervous. <laughs> and he'll face a beat up Miami Marlins ball club for game one tonight. Brian Peterson leads off. Gorky Hernandez, the former Brave farmhand, is in center. Jose Reyes has had a good year for them. Carlos Lee, Greg Dobbs is in right field. Still no Giancarlo Stanton, who hopes to play here tomorrow night. Donovan Solano's at second. Rob Brantley, the young catcher, has been very impressive against Atlanta. Gil Velasquez plays third base, and Nate Ivaldi is the pitcher and hits ninth. 
They'll be facing Braves right-hander Chris Medlin. You see there as a starter since 2010 and 24 starts, 13-0 with a 2.44 ERA, averaging 5 or I'm sorry, 5.7 strikeouts per two walks per game. So striking guys out, not walking anybody, and uh, that's the reason why he's been pitching really well as a starter. Love seeing him out there. Love to watch him pitch. His four keys to pitching success tonight against the Fish. Number one, Billy Joel. Don't go changing. Try and please. Just stick with what you're doing. Diana Ross. Remember this song? Upside down, inside out. He is working all four corners of the strike zone and fooling hitters left and right, racking up a ton of strikeouts just because he's throwing it where they're not looking for it. Man, you're getting ready for the playoffs. That was the best Ford keys to the success. To the game Pretty that rocked out that right there. Huh? Really good. Really Thanks. good. I'm impressed. I'm not singing the umps though. Here's Tim McClellan <laughs> behind the plate. DJ Raybird, Ted Barrett, and Marvin Hudson. Well, if you sing, sing Tim McClellan, make sure it's a slow one, okay? <laughs> yes, hey, you're singing the blues there. <laughs> Brian Peterson leads off for the Marlins. Peterson at 199 for the year. Edlin's first pitch of the night is even for a called strike. Is it tough, Tommy, to face the same team in back-to-back -back starts? That's something Medlin and Evaldi are doing tonight. Ground ball to second. Good start for Medlin. He hits Peterson to roll out. My answer, my you know, it's, it's not a yes or no per se. I mean, I think for Chris, where he's coming off a good start, your inclination is not to change a whole lot of stuff. I think that the word coming out of his last start was maybe his fastball command wasn't as good as it has been. So that's certainly something I think he would focus on in his bullpen sessions. But I think more times than not, if you have a bad outing against the team and then you're facing them again right away, there's a the little bit of that, okay, what did I do wrong? And that, that inclination to try and make a bunch of changes going into that next start. Ground ball by Gorkis Hernandez. Three pitches, two outs for Medlin. And even with Chris not having his best fastball, he only gave up four hits in eight innings. I mean, we'd, we'd all like to have those kinds of problems, right? Yeah, exactly. So here's the rest of the Braves' defense. Ree Johnson in center field. Mike DeBorn still suffering with that sore thumb. Chipper and Freeman on the corner. Simmons and Ugla up the middle, and Brian McCann's behind the plate. Oh, yeah. I talked to Michael before the game. He said his thumb is still sore. Uh, hoping to play tomorrow, maybe the next day. They just don't want to rush it and risk re-injuring it more severely. I was going to say, I think one more thought to that back-to-back -back start thing. I think that's the mistake a lot of guys make is they think they have to make changes. I always felt like I'm going to go out there and keep doing what I've been doing until you show me you can beat me, and I think that should be Med's approach. One ball, one strike to shortstop Jose Reyes. One of the new Marlins and one of the few new Marlins who's had a good year. 285 average, 11 home runs. All the changes that Miami has made. Reyes no longer hitting leadoff, but has to hit third to give them some sort of run producing presence in the middle of this lineup. I say, you have to give him some credit there. It was, this is certainly not the kind of season he was anticipating coming here, but he's held it together. It's not the team he thought he was coming to play on either. Ray is batting in front of Carlos Lee, our Delta Airlines on deck batter. He's hit well in this park and has hit the Braves well this year. So let's worry about him in the second. Again out of play, one ball, two strikes. If there was one spot in particular that he was having a hard time hitting down in Florida, Tommy, it was a glove side inside corner to a left-handed hitter. He just couldn't quite get that two-seamer to do what he wanted it to do and was missing in there early in the game. Reyes took that ball in the dirt and the count now even two and two. Ozzy Guillen just raved about Medlin's outing though down in at Marlins Park talking about how good he is and how good he's going to be. Uh, it's just it's refreshing for me in this day and age where seemingly everybody out there throws 95 plus you, you talk about every 
forget the fact that he throws 88 to 91 for the most part. It's all for him. It's all change of speeds and location. He just does it very well. Reyes shoots one toward right field. Hayward going back, reaches up, it's off his glove, and Reyes on his way to second. And he'll stand there with two outs. Look for a second like Jason had that one measured. Looked like a change up too that Reyes was sitting on and got one that was upstairs and able to pick on it. Oh, did it. The glove just couldn't grab it. We await the official scoring. And it's a double for Reyes, his 36th of the season. So now Carlos Lee will indeed hit. And he's 16 for 46 against the Braves this year. One ball, no strikes. Surprising to see Carlos Lee with only nine home runs this late in the season. 13 straight years, he's had 10 or more homers in his big league career. And he's going to roll out towards Simmons at short. Tricky hop. But Lee and the Marlins are retired in the top of the first inning. Medlin's off to a good start at home. Let's see if the Braves bats contain Nate Ovaldi next. And here's how Freddy Gonzalez lines up his Atlanta squad. Reed Johnson leads off in center field. Then it's Martin Prado and Jason Hayward. Chipper Jones, his goal is to play every game on the homestand before what should be big crowds all week long. Freddie Freeman, Dan Ugla, Brian McCann, Andrelton Simmons, and then Chris Medlin. You see Nathan of all these numbers, 20 starts, 4 and 12 with a 4.3. That's 20 starts between... The Dodgers and Miami, three and six with Miami, one and six with the Dodgers. Tommy, you mentioned a minute ago that Chris Medlin doesn't throw 95 miles an hour. This guy does <laughs> and, and kept that velocity through his eight innings against Atlanta down south. Yeah, I got I got a chance to catch the middle portion of that game. Uh, and yeah, he was. He was impressive and you know not one of those guys that looks like he's a max effort guy either there is there's a lot coming at you with his size but it looks pretty free and easy. And his four keys to pitching success tonight turn up the heat. In fact just before that start against Atlanta his pitching coach Randy St. Clair went to him and said hey give me everything you got. Don't hold anything back. He went from 92 to 94 to 95 to 98 in that series and also please sir may I have a run his last five starts he's gone 0 and 4 and had a total of nine runs scored for him so any run support tonight would be most welcomed by Mr. Evaldi. 
Yeah, he uh, take that a step further. He had the lowest runs per game when he was with the Dodgers, and that's only crept up a little bit now since he's been with the Marlins. Two balls, two strikes. And his first strikeout comes with Braves leadoff man Reed Johnson swinging and missing. One up and one man down. Makeshift lineup for Miami tonight. They are riddled by injury. We've seen Greg Dobbs play third base. He's in right field tonight. Brian Peterson's at left. Gil Velasquez starting at third base. Carlos Lee's at first, and young Rob Brantley is behind the plate. Again, no Giancarlo Stanton tonight. He's hopeful of playing tomorrow. He's missed five games before tonight's play with a side injury. And a quick strike to Martin Prado. As great as Ivaldi pitched against the Braves in Florida on August 2nd here at Turner Field, he went two innings, eight hits, six runs. That may have prompted Randy St. Clair to say, hey, quit holding back. Let's, let's air it out. That went all the way to the screen. And Joe, one thing we talked about during that Miami series, one thing they really have stockpiled is an awful lot of power arms, both in rotation and down in that bullpen. Now one after another coming out of their pen. Ground ball towards second. Solano's got it and Prado's the second out. Well, and on top of everything else, they went to New York, got swept by the Mets, and now a lot of sniping in their clubhouse. Some bad things being exchanged between Heath Bell, their preseason closer, I'll call him, the veteran relief pitcher, and the manager, Ozzie Guillen, among other quotes that made the papers. Hayward bounces to Reyes at short, and he makes the pick to first, and the Braves are out in order. In their opening inning tonight. On we go to the second. Braves and Marlins will score. Side of things here at Turner Field in Atlanta, the Miami Marlins have really been sniping back and forth, as Joe mentioned, between Isaac Ian and Heath Bell and, and Isaac Ian and owner Jeffrey Loria. Heath Bell said about his manager, it's hard to respect a guy that doesn't tell you the truth or doesn't tell you face to face. There's probably reasons why. He didn't elaborate on that. And then when asked about his job security, Ozzie said about his owner, if Jeffrey doesn't think I'm doing the job, I should, the job I should do, it's not the first time he's fired a manager. Look yourself in the mirror and ask why so many blankety-blank managers come through here. Well, Ozzie's right about that. Six managers in eight years. 
for the Marlins. And safe to say things haven't gone the way they anticipated. Greg Dobbs leads off the second and takes a quick strike. Yeah, the Marlins new uniforms, new name, new stadium, lots of new players, big splash. And it got off to an awful start for Ozzy Guillen, of course, with his comments about Fidel Castro in Cuba. Slow start. They had a great month of May and then utterly imploded since then. At 66 and 87 for the year. And Dobbs is down swinging. First strikeout for Medlin tonight. One up, one down. Is that Diana Ross song you were talking about? Inside out, upside down. down. Upside In, down. Inside out. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> that's one thing he's done very, very well uh, for a guy that's relatively inexperienced, you know, in, in terms of starting and whatnot. He's really figured out how to use all four quadr quadrants of the strike zone with his fastball. There's another good example of climbing the ladder right there. Second baseman Donovan Solano's the batter. And he takes ball one. Fly ball deep left. Prado going back. He's at the fence, leaping try, and he's not going to get it. Donovan Solano hits a solo home run with one out in the second inning, and the Marlins have struck first. First homer. And only the fifth allowed by Chris Medlin. Looks like he's getting the silent treatment. First big league homer, and now a line drive by Brantley to right field. Jason Hayward grabs that, two outs. Solano had a great series in New York. Is seven for his last 12, now eight for his last 13. That never gets old, the silent treatment. <laughs> it's been around forever, but it's always, yeah. always funny to watch the guy's reaction that's getting it done to him. So how about Donovan Solano? His first big league home run comes against the hottest pitcher in baseball, Chris Medlin, tonight. Base is clear. Gil Velasquez bats and is down a quick strike. It tells you how good Medlin was going. There was almost like a hush of people couldn't believe what they were yeah. seeing that he that Med gave up not only a run but a home run. Well, the amazing thing too about Medlin is if an opponent scores, he usually does limit it to just one. They've not gotten any. Multi run innings against him lately, as Tommy showed you earlier. 90 something innings for Medlin without allowing more than one run. And that, that's just unbelievable. I mean, you think multi innings, you think, well, you had a bad inning. Just think that's a blooper and a home run. That's a multi, that's a multi run inning right there. He hasn't done any of that. And again, he climbs the ladder, and Velasquez is down on strikes, but Donovan Solano. It's his first big league home run, a shot to straightaway left field. And in the second, Miami leads Atlanta 1 0.
nothing as we head to the bottom of the second inning. All season long, Braves baseball on Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. And Chipper Jones starts the second. Ball high from Evaldi. There's three for seven against him in his career and hitting 295 for the campaign. I imagine reality has set in for Chipper. Final homestand play starts tonight. Probably sink in a little bit more, even more so this weekend for sure. But, but he's handled it all well. But I guarantee you, he's looking forward to getting to the playoffs and just playing some baseball. You know, he doesn't like all this attention. But I'll bet if the team does celebrate tonight, if with a win, celebrate getting into the postseason, I'll bet he's right in the middle of it. Oh, absolutely. Enjoying the last go around of that. And he's aboard to start the second. Devaldi's first base runner is a Chipper Jones walk. Now Freddie Freeman's turn. 21 homers, 91 knocked in for Freddie. Dug out today, right at the end of their round of batting practice, Freeman, Ugla, McCann, and Hinsky had a little contest, long ball contest, and it was impressive. Long haul bombers, impressive, pretty much. Pretty much, it, it looked like those guys hitting softballs. There was a winner and three guys tying for second. There's one of the guys that tied for second. The guy at the plate tied for second. And Hensky tied for second. That guy was hitting balls that were scraping the second deck. Fought that off and stays alive. One ball, two strikes. Bottom line was they were having a good time. That's good to see. Short lead at first for Chipper. And Freeman shoots one in the shallow right field. Well, he just muscled that ball out of the reach of Solano. And the Braves in business with two on and nobody out for former Marlon Dan Ugla. When you can fight off a 97 that may not even be a strike on the inside corner, you are pretty strong. That was not a bad pitch at all. Time for the Academy. Sports and outdoor leaderboard most RBIs against the Marlins over the last two years. How about former Marlin Dan Ugla? That includes 14 RBIs this year. Strike one to Ugla. Some sustained success for Dan over the last two weeks, hitting 286 in his last 16 games played. RBI chance here in the Atlanta second. One ball, one strike. Deep short. Reyes can't get that. 
And Chipper runs through the stop sign. He's coming home and he'll score standing up. He's got to go back and touch home plate. He does, and the game's tied at one. Tim McClellan nodding as he went by. Like he saw him miss it. You know, I think Brian Snicker threw up the stop sign in time, guys. But with Chipper right now on his knees, if he doesn't see it right away, it's harder to stop than it is to keep going. Stop sign was up right there when he stepped on the bag, but Chipper didn't pick it up right away. Now watch. He missed home. Tried not to make a big deal about it, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you never can't tell with Tim because... He didn't exactly make a call, and you're not real sure what the deal was, but I was thinking the same thing. Go back and touch that thing, because he never did make a call. So the Braves are finally able to score against Devaldi, and still nobody out as Dan Ugla brings home Atlanta's first run. Now Brian McCann bats, and he has an even count. It's 15 RBIs for Ugla this year against his old club. Foul out of play, one ball, two strikes. When I was talking about the long ball contest with those four guys, it's not like the other three guys got cheated. And if there was a contest for hitting the most balls over the 400 foot mark in straightaway center, Brian McCann wins. Maybe a sign that shoulder's feeling better if he can drive the ball to straightaway center. Chipper Jones led the inning off with a walk. He scored on Ugla's base hit to left. Dan's at first, Freddie's at second, and still nobody out. Baldy and Brantley can't get together on the signs. Somehow I don't think Brantley ran out there and put his glove over his face and said, fastball. <laughs> there was a little more to it than that. Now they're ready to go. One ball, two strikes. But maybe he did. He missed off the plate. And all he's throwing a lot of pitches in the early innings. He's up to 29 of them and has nobody out in this inning. Twenty of those twenty nine in this inning. Out of play again for McCann. Got one up there. Just a little late on it. Well, see that same one maybe about an inch lower. We might be talking about one of those ones over the. 400 foot sign in center field. High fly to left. Peterson's back. And he has room. No chance to tag for Freeman. Long fly out for Brian McCann. One away in the Braves second. Evaldi's just a kid. He's just 22 years old. 
6'2", 215. We talked about him in Florida, about him being a guy from Alvin, Texas, the home of Nolan Ryan. One of the things that uh, I guess if it's if there's a criticism about him, Tom, it's how he wraps the ball with his wrist. What are some of the negatives about that? Just inconsistency, inconsistency on the release point? Yeah, inconsistency, you know, maybe a little bit more pressure on the elbow coming out. I mean, you know, you, you, you talk to guys so much about, you know, you, when you see guys rapping like that, you, 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 you think that they're just squeezing the ball a little bit tighter and, and you want to talk to guys so much about, or, you know, that, that ball in your hand is kind of an egg. You don't want to drop it, but you don't want to break it, so you don't want the death grip on it. Slow roller out to Reyes short. And Salado will turn a double play. Evaldi does a good job of minimizing damage. He gives up a leadoff walk to Chipper. And Dan Ugla drives him home with the Braves first run. On we go to number three for tied one apiece. Third inning, the Braves have tied things 1-1. Braves country meet the Fox Sports South girls, Brittany and Kanika. Get to know the new faces of our network as they take you behind the scenes of their promo shoot at Turner Field. You can find this video, photos, and more on FoxSportsSouth.com. Chris Medlin showed he was human in the second inning. Donovan Solano's first big league homer put Miami in front. But look at the impressive work by Chris Medlin on our SunTrust solid performance. That's a consecutive game started, allowing less than three runs and less than three walks. Greg Maddox did it 13 times, and he's already done it 11 in a row. It's not fair to continue to compare Chris Medlin to Greg Maddox, but we keep showing statistics and graphics that put him in the same company. How can you not? Well, when, uh, when you keep saying stuff like that, it's going to continue the conversation. There's no question about it. Late swing by Evaldi, who's still alive, 0 2. And I keep saying it, it's not fair to compare the two because he's just getting started. And Greg pitched for 20 years, but. The comparison is the way they go about their business and the way they pitch, the things they do to prepare. All very similar. Strikeout number three for Medlin. If all these down swinging. And there's the first out. Both good athletes, both good fielding pitchers. Could handle the bat. 
So there's a lot of similarities to draw from. And chess masters, too. I mean, that's something Chris has talked about. He really enjoys the cat and mouse game between pitcher and hitter. He loves outsmarting his oppo opponents at the plate. No, I mean, there's obvious similarities. Um, you know, I think in the in the short term here, you're obviously comparing the, the success that both of them had, and albeit Chris's in a very short period of time. But you're right, the approach, the way they pitch, the styles of pitching, all that is very similar. High fly ball to center by Peterson. And Reed Johnson on the warning track. Makes the play, and that's out number two. Wonder if the Marlins Joe feel like they're playing in a bandbox tonight. I think they probably do anywhere they go after <laughs> they leave their home park. I mean that fly ball is 30 feet from the fence in center field in Florida. Two quick outs for Gorky Hernandez. He bounced out to short his first time up. Marlins might be looking for a center fielder in the offseason. Don't know where Medio Bonifacio is going to play. He was in center field earlier this year. When they traded Omar Infante to the Tigers, he moved to second base. And he's another one of those Miami players that's banged up and done for the year. In fact, the Marlins are so shorthanded with injured players. Not knowing if Stanton can pinch it, not knowing if Austin Kearns can pinch it, they may have just two active and eligible bench players for Ozzy Gian the rest of the way. Which is, is tough to do this time of year when you have call-ups. Swing and a miss. Gorkis Hernandez is down on strikes. Medlin has four punch outs in the game, a shutdown inning, and his bats go back to work here at home. in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors, by AT&T U-verse, by Delta Airlines, and by Toyota. Chris Medlin leads off the Atlanta third. And he takes ball one. There are numerous scenarios for the Braves to clinch a playoff spot tonight. The easiest one is if Atlanta wins, they're in postseason play. Atlanta could also clinch a playoff spot tonight if they lose, but they'd need a little help. That would mean Milwaukee would have to lose tonight and the Dodgers would have to lose tonight. So that means 
very simply Atlanta's magic number is one if they take care of their own business. Then they can concentrate on perhaps chasing down the Nationals. The Braves are five behind them at the start of tonight's play. And nine games left on the calendar. Edlin's down on strikes. And that's the second strikeout for Nate Ivaldi. And the National League Wild Card is our Subway sub prize on the line tonight. Got a nice five and a half game lead over St. Louis, who is right now in control of the second wild card spot by a good margin over the Dodgers in Milwaukee. Milwaukee went into Washington and split four games, but they lost ground to St. Louis, who was playing Chicago, and now St. Louis is at Houston. Yeah, we talked about that last week. The Cardinals with a very soft nine game run. Six with Houston, three with the Cubs. That certainly has helped their cause. Getting Chris Carpenter back helps their cause a little bit too. He pitched real well in Chicago. So he's definitely a man to keep an eye on if that wild card race stays Atlanta 1, St. Louis 2. The Braves would host a potential wild card play in game against the Cardinals. Again, if standings stay the way they are, you might see Chris Carpenter and Chris Medlin. Redbirds get underway in about 15 minutes down at Minute Maid Park tonight. Yeah, assuming, assuming the Braves do take care of business tonight, and Washington obviously already has in terms of a playoff spot, it puts both teams in a little bit of a weird position because now you're trying to walk that line of Giving guys rest if they need it, trying to set things up for the postseason, but at the same time, you've still got a division race going on. You got to be mindful of. Roll toward third. That's going to bounce foul. I think uh, Freddie was trying to address that some Tom during this month, in that he would give a guy a day off here and there, um, just on uh, in no particular pattern or against any particular team or day of the week, just to maybe. Avoid that sort of thing if they did get close to the Nationals. I think from a rest standpoint, everybody should be in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. This cool weather helps keep everybody fresh, too. Yeah. And then just throwing this out there, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, but I wonder, you know, what else is going through his mind in terms of how much does Chipper Jones play this last? Home stand of the year because there's going to be some upset people uh -huh. that are coming to see him for the last time if he's not in the lineup. Johnson's down on strikes for the second time. Well, Chipper answered that for us on our last bus ride from Philadelphia. He said his goal is to play in all six of these games at home. Now, again, circumstances will dictate whether he plays all nine innings of those games, and certainly Freddie Gonzalez, to your point, Tom. Has the power of the pen. He'll make up the lineup card, not Chipper. Yeah, but I'm sure he's. Look, I, I, I'm sure he hopes that, like you say, with Chipper feeling good, the cool weather, all those things, that he's in a position where Chipper feels good enough to play every one of these games. That would be the perfect scenario. So we've got good seats available for Wednesday and Thursday against the Marlins. The big night for Chipper is here Friday. That's a standing room only game. There are standing room only tickets available for $20. And then the final two games against the Mets, there are seats available for those as well. The final two regular season games for the Braves here at Turner Field. There's where you go to get your tickets. Two balls and a strike to Martin Prado. If that was a slider or a, a cutter, I'm going to call it a cutter. He throws it just ever so often off his fastball. Not a lot. Prado with a base hit with two strikes. He's amazing. And into the right field corner. Dobbs has a little trouble, and Prado's going to try to take an extra base. Throw to third. He's going to be late.
get this man with two strikes, you're playing right into his hands. Yeah, you almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah. almost want to get him out before you get there. And I knew Dobbs was going to have a little bit of trouble taking the angle he was taking in there for that. But, I mean, you're right. It's it's not not really a good pitch, obviously. It's probably a ball. But, you know, Martin is just so good at shortening up with two strikes and putting the ball in play and, and amazingly good at finding holes when he does. His 90th of the year. Tied for the most in a season. Most hits with two strikes. With a former brave Brett Butler. That was a long time ago. Who was the other guy? There was a three way tie. Todd Help in 2000. Jason didn't get a fastball. One ball, one strike. So a two out, out opportunity in the Braves third. Let's see if Hayward can chase home his 80th man. Corner. One ball, two strikes. And Hayward chased a high fastball, and that retires the side. No runs, a hit, a man left. Our duel continues in Atlanta. We're tied one apiece. Evaldi, although Atlanta does have a run against the Miami starter tonight. We are through three. Our game's tied one apiece. Fish got on the board first in the second inning with one out. Donovan Solano got a fastball kind of running back to him and ran right back to the barrel of his bat for his first career big league homer. The Braves responded in the bottom of the second. A leadoff walk to Chipper, a single by Freeman, and this base hit by Dan Ugla. Brock Chipper around. That's where we stand. 1 1. So Jose Reyes leads things off in the fourth. Carlos Lee and Greg Dobbs to follow. And a little high to Reyes, who doubled his first time up. He fought off a couple of pitches to stay alive. Ryan one off Jason Hayward's glove in right field. Bouncing ball up the middle. Simmons gloves grabs fires to first. Freeman couldn't come up. 
And Reyes is at first to start the fourth inning. You know I, what? I didn't think he had a chance to make a play there. He was going to get him. Yeah, he was. If Freddie scoops that, he gets him. I thought, thought the same thing initially. All right, he's not going to get to it. And then when he did, I thought he's got no chance of throwing him out. But you're right. Freddie scoops that. He's out. Look how far over on the first base side of second he was. Very tough chance for Freeman, and he almost got it. By a stride. I mean, yeah. he had Reyes by a full step. Incredible play by Andrelton. Now Medlin. As you know, has a terrific pickoff move. We'll try to keep Reyes close. And go after Carlos Lee. Lee has hit into 12 double plays this year. Very close at first. That's the most on the Marlins club, but remember, Lee started the year in Houston. While with the Marlins, Carlos has only hit five double plays. Remember, Medlin got himself in some trouble down in Florida. And a runner got to third base on a pickoff attempt when he was trying to get Solano and he threw it away. But able to pitch around it. But amazingly, Joe, when you look at Chris Medlin, cleanup hitters up there, somehow, some way, Chris does some of his best work against opposing fourth place hitters. And Reyes somehow got back. Heard somebody on the Braves bench say they got him. How close was this? I thought it was, might have been me that said it because I was thinking the same thing from here. I thought he had him. <laughs> Boy. Uh, Freddie got handcuffed a little bit with the tag and the, with the scoop and the sweep. DJ Raber in the first base, huh? Looked like he did get back in there just barely. Two strikes for Carlos Lee. Ground ball toward Ugla. There's one. Plenty of time to get Carlos double play. Two outs. Not a way to put it on him, Chip. Look at the work Chris Medlin continues to do against cleanup men. And no extra base hits. Well, they're not exactly cleaning up, are they? That, that in and of itself would stymie a, little, a lot of big innings. So the bases are clear. Greg Dobbs, the batter, he struck out swinging his first time up. Dobbs, before the game, called a Marlins team meeting, in part to address all that's been swirling around this ball club in Miami. Between Heath Bell and Ozagian. Bell, who later apologized to his manager. But the frustrations have been one after the other in South Florida this year for Ozzy Guillen and company. And whether Ozzy is back as the Marlins manager next year, I think it's safe to say is an open question right now. This is the first of, I believe, a four year contract. Well, there was some thought and a few stories written about whether Larry Beinfest would be rehired as well, president of the team. But I believe I read where he has been extended and will be back. Ball, two strikes. 
Dobbs pops one up toward the Marlins dugout and out of play. We'll do it again. Usually, at, 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 sorry, Chip, at this time of year, a team's 21 games under 500. It's usually a young team that's trying to get better, trying to improve. And more often than not, you got a, a manager who's filled with patience and a guy who knows that, you know, this is a ball club. I'm going to have to weather a few bad nights. That's not this kind of team. It's supposed to be a good team, and Ozzie is not filled with patience. And he's seen 87 bad nights already, and the Braves are hoping to make it one more tonight. Medlin another strikeout. Chipper Jones coming up in the Atlanta fourth as we're still tied one apiece. Inning. Chipper's the only brave to touch the plate. Took him two tries to do it, but <laughs> he let off the second with a walk, and Dan Ugla brought him home with a hit. Chipper one hit away from tying Robbie Alomar on the all time hit list. Here's the all time hit parade. Good final nine days. It's not out of the possibility to catch Goose Goslin for Chipper. A lot of Hall of Famers right there. Boy, oh boy. Still two and two. Things Chipper talks about, like the home run he hit off Applebaum here to win the ball game, is against a hard thrower. He said if they if they get the ball down, or I can just drop the barrel on it, he feels good about that chance. Apparently they're not going to cooperate. Yeah. Well, something else Chipper is trying to accomplish in this series is having the most RBI as a Brave against any single opponent. Fly to center, but he got under it. Torquis Hernandez will have room. And he makes the play for out number one. 161 RBIs against the Marlins franchise for Chipper Jones. And he's 0 for 1 tonight. As you know, the Braves are hopeful of playing baseball deep into October. 
Postseason tickets are on sale now. Get them for the National League Wild Card game Friday, October 5th here at Turner Field. Go to Braves.com slash postseason right now to order yours. Now, fellas, the Braves have been very clear. They have not given up hopes on the East and getting some help tonight from the Phillies. They're hoping to get a lot of help from the Phillies because there's six games left between the Phillies and the Nationals. Three this week and three next week to end the season. That's Cole Hamels versus John Lannon tonight. And so an Atlanta win and Washington loss means the Braves would be four games back with eight to play. to Freeman who muscled a single pass to Donovan Solano his first time up. And all they came from the Dodgers in the Hanley Ramirez deal. Josh Johnson and Jacob Turner whom we figure to see in this series in fact we will the final game with the Marlins this year. Fish trying to put together a starting rotation that do some damage in 2013. They've got some good pieces to the puzzle. Some good young offensive players like you guys said a lot of big power arms. Forget Ricky Nolasco, who's made 30 starts for him and has won 12 games. Mark Burley, 13 game winner in his first season in the National League. Good battle here with Freddie Freeman. Two balls, two strikes. And it stayed high for a full count. It'll be interesting to see how, where last year they've added so many pieces through free agency. It'll be interesting to see how attractive a team it is this winter to free agents with all the turmoil that's going on off the field. Well, there's already talk, already talk of cutting the payroll. This season was a $95 million payroll. And according to one report, Clark Spencer, the Miami Herald, that it would likely be scaled back in 2013 to around 70 to 80 million. And a 12 pitch at bat ends with a Freeman strikeout. Fifth of the game for Ivaldi. Fans, it's time for our Georgia Power Energy tip number four. Now it's easier than ever to support environmentally friendly energy generation with Georgia Power's Earth Sense Green Energy Program. Join a growing community to help bring more renewal power, renewable power to Georgia. Number four. Yeah, I said, <laughs> I said number four this time, right? Yeah, you yeah. did. Okay. No, just, okay. Just uh, backing you up. It's a visual medium. We've got to make sure that <laughs> everybody at home's on the same page, too. Dan Ugla is returning to being a threat at the plate for the Braves and has been for the last couple of weeks. An RBI hit gives Dan 74 runs batted in this year. It's funny we were talking earlier about how some things seemed like it was so long ago. It seems like forever ago when it was the whole Dan's not playing anymore and all the turmoil that went on with that. And what that last like two days, three days, maybe just about. <laughs> and there were some who wondered, OK, or said, sit him down for a week or sit him down for 10 days. For a guy who's been an everyday player in his entire major league career, I'll bet three days felt like an eternity for Dan Ugla. Absolutely. Those guys that play every day don't know what to do with themselves. That and he does he didn't know where, you know, that was an open-ended benching. He wasn't sure where that was going to go. He didn't know how long that was going to be. He took care of that pretty much himself by 
beginning to hit better. And Freddie had no choice but to put him back in there. So Dan forces a full count. He's walked 90 times this year, by the way. Full count this inning on all three hitters. And add in that long at bat for Freeman, so the pitch count going up on Evaldi. Ninety-one walks for Ugla, and the second for Evaldi. That brings up Brian McCann, who had a nice at bat before flying out in the Braves' second. Seventy-seven pitches for the young Miami right-hander. Good thing he's not pitching for the Rockies. Right. You've still got a little chip on your shoulder. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> well, Chip showed me his notes from earlier in that series and wanted yeah. me to know if I wanted him to save them. Yeah, you want to frame those? Think about that in the offseason? Please. We, we yeah. single-handedly changed their whole philosophy that series. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, no strikes for Brian McCann. About to throw his 80th pitch here in the fourth inning. When he went eight innings of four hit shutout ball, his last start against Atlanta, he threw 114. Yeah, it does have a good changeup. He's back to back right there. That's good. It's when it's down in the zone, it's it's a nice change of speeds. It's got good movement. And when you're throwing as hard as he does, if you can get that thing around the plate and down, hitters are gonna have to cheat to get his fastball. Brian couldn't get that fastball at 94, and it's six strikeouts for Nate Evaldi. Fifth inning in Atlanta. Braves tied at one as we go to the fifth inning. Well, when we wanted to find out what Chris Medlin was like on the mound, we went to one of his teammates, and Tim Hudson says, Meds doesn't just mix his pitches well, he also balances his emotions well. It's kind of goofy, uh, but at the same time, you know, he goes out there and competes. I mean, he's, uh, he's very serious out there. Uh, you know, he's, there's nothing jokeable out there when, he's, when he takes the field. I mean, he goes out there and he competes. He, he, he knows how to pitch. 
How serious is Chris Medlin, guys, in his last start down in Miami against these Marlins? He was nearly unhittable. He was so serious, however. Before he came out of the game, he snuck up between, behind Tim Hudson and David Ross. He took a full cup of ice-cold water, and he dumped it right down Tim Hudson's pants. I tell you, he's locked in. <laughs> Whatever he's doing, <laughs> keep doing it. Billy Joel. Yeah, this was this was Chris before the game tonight. Yeah, he just finished his warm ups, had to go to the field. <laughs> we may have to do that again later for just in case somebody missed it, just so I can laugh again. <laughs> No, I think uh, I think Huddy hit it on the head. We've talked about it before. He is, he comes off as very goofy, which is not a bad thing when you're not on the mound. But when he's on that mound, it's all business. Was Greg Maddox that way in keeping with our Greg Maddox, Chris Medlin theme tonight? They, they're similar in that regard. I, you know, I don't think either one of them took took themselves too seriously. Uh, I think Greg was the the furthest thing from his mind four days a week was pitching. But on the day it was time to pitch, he was locked in. Change up evens the count to Donovan Solano, who's the only man to touch the plate for Miami tonight. A solo home run with one out in the second. Right down the middle, and Solano took it for strikeout number six. It's not often that a guy's halfway back to the dugout before you see a guy get rung up by the umpire, but. Pretty much the case there. Yeah, there was there was no hoping that that pitch didn't have a very large portion of the plate. <laughs> now, when Tim makes that call, does he say strike three? Let me, Tommy. Batted with Tim behind the plate before. You can hear him. He's got a little bit of a little growl. There a little noise that he makes when he's starting to ring you up, so you can hear him. Before he starts to make the motion. Rob Brantley lost the bat and has an even count of ball into strike. We're used to that too, aren't we, fellas? Yeah. All of 12 pitches out of the zone. For a Marlins club that hasn't had many highlights this year, acquiring this kid might be one of them. We've seen him quite a bit. Showed he can spray the ball all around the park down in Miami, Joe. Yeah, you asked me if I liked him or what I thought of him when we were down in Miami, and I said for a false small sample size, I liked him, but he's carried that on. He had a good series in New York. He is uh Coming into this game, hitting 381 over his last 21 games. And he's going to roll out to Chris Medlin. That's an easy play. Two outs. We haven't really seen him tested behind the plate, but we will. And the bases are empty for Gil Velasquez. Game Connect will keep you on top of your stats tonight as the Braves hunt for October. Log on for a complete look at each play as the action unfolds. Follow along right now with Game Connect on FoxSportsSouth.com. Chris would love to get the eighth place hitter and start the sixth inning with his opposing pitcher. One ball, no strikes. Rolled up the middle. Simmons gloves, grabs, and guns to first in time. Three up. Three down. Medlin has settled in. Let's see if the Braves can give him a lead when we return.
Ford, by the Home Depot, and by AT&T. One one's our score. Eight, nine, and one up for the Braves. Game one of the homestand. Game one of this three-game series with Miami. And here's what's on tap on the Jamison Inn upcoming schedule. Good matchup tomorrow. Lefty Paul Mahalam against hard throwing right-hander Josh Johnson, who the Braves beat down in Miami last week. And then Jacob Turner. We get a look at him. He's one and three against Tommy Hansen, who will be going for his 13th win again. Hopefully that'll come on Thursday. Ball one to Andrelton Simmons. I like Ivaldi. I mean, I know he got lit up here back in August, but what I've seen over his last 12 innings against the Braves, he looks good. 22 years old. Kind of tough to teach 97, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. You know, if he can rein in his command a little bit, then he's got a chance to really take off. He's got the stuff. Deep short, Reyes. Wow. Tom, what's uh, what's typically the the last pitch to really come around for a young pitcher? I mean, is it is it command? Is it a, a, a good changeup? Well, you know, pitch wise, it's probably a, a good changeup. I think most guys are, you know, probably their best secondary pitch is some kind of breaking ball. The changeup's a little bit tougher to bring along and then when you get that all together is the consistency and that usually evolves around command. You know, it's hard to go out there and, and and be consistently a winner or consistently give your team a chance to win when you're not consistently going out there and pounding the strike zone. Medlin, one of the six strikeouts earned by Evaldi tonight. Now it's a 2 1 count. Keep an eye on tonight for you is the Reds. Not just because we want to see what Milwaukee does, but need to keep an eye on Cincinnati. Yeah, you're right. The Reds enter play tonight, one game behind the Nationals for the best record in the National League. Chris is out number two, and that quite obviously would alter the way the wild card race and the divisional series would match up should the Braves make postseason play and win the wild card game. Because under the new rules, you no longer avoid playing the team with the best record if they're in your division, which means it could be either Washington or Cincinnati if you win the wild card. And I believe the Reds are doing a little bit of that resting you were talking about, Tom, there. Giving oh. their guys a couple of days off here and there. Well, that's a tough call, too, because that home field advantage is a big, big mm -hmm. deal. Especially in that park. Yeah, I don't think there's... Uh... While you're excited as a team to get into the postseason, uh, I think you, they would be about as excited as we were as a pitching staff when we got to go out to Colorado and have a series out there. It's just not something you look forward to. Yeah, first two games <laughs> and a best three out of five. Well, right now, Nate Nivaldi is just saying, I'm from Alvin, Texas. And this is what Nolan Ryan would do. Good old country hardball. To second, and Solano's got it. And that retires the Braves in the fifth. Good pitching tonight in Atlanta. 1 1's your score.
I'm a chip with you from Turner Field. Braves magic number for a playoff spot stands at one. And our McDonald's fan of the game looks ready to celebrate a playoff clinching victory tonight. I like that. It's a big enough opening for you know, cold the Coors, Coors Light beverage. Get the Coors Light uh, cold train. My beer. Your beer. Yes. Huh. Baldy leads off for the Marlins. Room to fire some M&Ms in there. He can't mask his excitement tonight as wow. Chris Medlin tries for his 10th win. I expect something like that out of small team. Not out of you. Yeah, Get better. Spent all day right in that one, Tommy. <laughs> Two yeah. balls, two strikes. Just missed that one. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a little half-hearted there. Even Baldy was saying, what am I doing up there? But he's worked a 3-2 count. Yeah, he did get drafted for his bat. Pop fly, long run, Freeman near the tarp and won't have to play. Chop toward Chipper. Gloves, grabs, and flips to first. And one away. Tom, put your mobile device away. It's trivia time. Our ATT universe trivia question. Chipper's one of two players to hit 200 or more homers in Atlanta. Who's the other? Hmm. Keyword me, Atlanta. I see what's going on here. We're going a little bit later with the trivia question, so my. Friends out there don't have a chance to text me an answer. I see what's going on here. A strike to Brian Peterson. Now, first name obviously comes to mind is Hank Aaron. Yeah, it's hard not to just blurt out Hank. Right. But then you start that moment of doubt goes in your head from the questioner which means Gretchen's question perverse pleasure right now mm -hmm. as we talk ourselves out of it's probably the right answer what was the exact question again verbiage chipper Jones is one of two players to hit 200 or more career homers in Atlanta so okay Andrew Jones was the answer to a trivia question the other day I think he hit 200 here He's got 400, doesn't he, in his career? Three something, I would think, anyway. Yet 50 one year. But didn't hit them all here, right? Another strikeout for Medlin. Peterson is caught looking. That's seven for Chris tonight. Boy, he is racking up big strikeout games for Atlanta. Now 115 strikeouts in roughly 130 innings. Remember, most of the time this year he's been in the bullpen. Remarkable. And he'll be the first to tell you he'd much rather have a short inning and three pitches and get three ground outs. Strikeouts are fine, but he's trying to pitch to contact. He just hopes it's weak contact. One ball, no strikes to Gorky Hernandez. He had a three hit game against the Braves on the 17th of September. And that's the question, I guess, for him at the big league level. Can he hit enough to be an everyday player? He started the year with Pirates, 
did not hit much went to the minor leagues then Miami got him and he's hitting but 180 for the year now and chipper short hop nice play ends the inning chipper tested a couple of times in the sixth inning and he passed with flying colors one one's our score home half of the sixth. Here are those plays back to back for you, Chip, that we were talking about. Here's a guy 40 years old. He's got an outstanding shortstop with great range to his left, but instincts take over, and you just make that play. He cuts it off, makes a good throw. And here, watch how he feels this ball. Kind of has to give a little ground there with the glove, soft hands, because by the time he got to it, he's a little bit of an in between hop, but he actually feels that ball a little bit behind him. Our home depot tools from the dugout. Nice plays there by Chipper. and. As we get closer to the end of the week, we've got some sound bites from Chipper on various things, and one of them is how he selects his glove and what kind of glove he uses. We'll talk to him about his bats and why he used certain bats. So make sure you're with us as we get through the week and talk to Chipper about this last homestand and his career. It's been a great career, obviously, but I don't think he gets enough credit for his defensive work. At third base for the Braves. Does he go to Academy Sports every spring and grab a new glove and some bats? No, no, but he could. Because they have the right stuff, the right price every day. Prado's down on strikes. That's a rarity. That's eight strikeouts for Evaldi. And Jason Hayward bats. He's 0 for 2, but he's been our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot man. 14 against Miami. 11 RBIs and 15 runs scored. Let's see if he can run into a fastball, park one, and give Atlanta the lead. Center Hernandez on the run still going can't get it. That's going to bounce off the fence. Hayward around second on his way to third and he'll slide in with a one out triple. Man he was busting it out of the box. This is what made this triple happen. He knew it had a chance to get over Hernandez's head. And then once it got down, he was off to the races. And then he had to change directions here, guys. I don't know if Velasquez was kind of in his path to try to go to the outside part of third, but right there, it's almost like a horse changing leads. He had to go to his left a little bit. And you hate seeing guys do that. A lot of times guys get hurt when they have to do that. 
Chipper jumps on the first pitch and drives it to deep right. Dobbs gives ground. And Chipper Jones will chase home Jason Hayward with a go-ahead run. It's 2-1 Atlanta. RBI 162 for Chipper against Miami. And now Medlin and the Braves enjoy a sixth inning lead. Here's Freddie Freeman. Tom, remember um, back in the fourth inning when he doubled up on some changeups to McCann and then uh, off speed looked like an off speed breaking ball struck him out. I think he tried to do that. He tried to do that to free to uh, Hayward rather doubled up on the changeup. Jason was ready for it when he hit the triple. Freddie tried to go the other way but was robbed by Gil Velasquez. But Chipper Jones his final homestand of the regular season as his first RBI tonight. Two to one. Chris Medlin having another outstanding night on the mound. He's had the strikeout ball working again tonight. He's used the fastball up in the zone, change up out of the zone. He's mixed in the ground ball double play when he needed it at pitching to contact, as Joe talked about. And then the breaking ball strikeout for good measure. So six innings of three hit, one run ball with six strikeouts. He's on his game again tonight. Now that Chris has the lead, fellas, he can start chasing some history, not just a win tonight. 72 pitches over six innings of one run baseball. The walks. And quickly 0 and 2 to Jose Reyes. And I slide it on a strikeout. He's got seven, not six. Another good night for Reyes against the Braves staff. He's two for two in the game. And how about this? Even when uh, the catcher wants you to throw a ball, he can do that too. High target. Matt Hardly even moved his glove. He's trying to throw a ball and he's still got a strike. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> how good he is. <laughs> Foul passed first by Reyes. Oh, and two. And this is the history I was alluding to since 1921. Whitey Ford and Carl Hubble. 22 consecutive wins by their club in games that they started. Medlin could tie them tonight. Well about three starts ago somebody brought that up to him and mentioned Whitey Ford and he just kind of 
he kind of blew it off. It was kind of like, really? I mean, come on. Don't even go there. Making comparisons to Whitey Ford, and yet he's that close. That's in the dirt for Reyes. One ball, two strikes. I think it's so hard for players when they're going through something like this to not look at the short term body of work. And, and when you look, when you're forced to look outside of that and you start talking about the great players in the game, you can't put yourself in that category. Reyes is down on strikes. That's a big out in this inning. Take away a lot of problems by keeping him off the base pass. Change up. And a beaut. Lee was doubled up last time up. He's 0 for 2. count. Washington's made a game of it against the Phillies. Bottom of the fifth inning now. Cole Hamels and the Phillies lead 5-3 at Citizens Bank Park. Braves five back at the start of tonight's play. And another chance for Simmons. Plenty of time with Lee running two outs. Greg Dobbs the batter with the bases clear in the seventh and all season long Braves baseball on Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors the right stuff the low price every day. Dobbs has whiffed twice. That's saying something. Greg's done real good work away from Marlins Park since late June. And he lost the bad handle as he fouls the ball to the left side for a strike. Okay? Yes, that's the other challenge for the Marlins, too, is figuring out what kind of offensive team they need to put together in their home park and, frankly, keep their hitters sane. Yeah, they're either going to have to go to more speed or move the fences in, I guess. Well, they're not going to move the fences <laughs> in. They said that when we were down in Miami. Well, people can change their minds. But to put it in perspective, the Marlins have hit 50 home home runs as a team. Well, you know, besides Chip or somebody else's hit, there's only one other person that's hit 200 in Atlanta. So, good point. Figure out who that is. Up and in, I guess. One ball, two strikes. Could be Ronnie Gant. Could be. Looped over third, and no chance for Chipper. Dobbs a big turnaround first slams on the brakes and Simmons thought about a throwback first but Freeman not close to the bag. Not a good idea to think about trying to go for two in the left field there's also a third baseman. <laughs> it's like fielding a bun here. Yeah can make this play. Yeah you know see, I guarantee you he's the, the left fielder makes that play better than any other left fielder in the game. <laughs> So Chris back to the stretch for the first time since the fourth inning and Donovan Solano is the batter. He's homered and struck out. Oh and one. He missed it. Here's his home run. Paul really looked in. He just got his hands inside got yeah. the barrel to it. It was on the inner. In her third, maybe even the inside corner. He just, like I said, he pulled his hands in nice. He got the silent treatment. And that's real tough to do in that Marlins dugout. 
Yes, it is. No balls, two strikes. Pitch choice here, Mr. Glavin. Hit a homer out on a decent pitch. He's thrown him a lot of breaking balls this at bat to get ahead 0 and 2. Well, it'd be hard hard to go away from either the high fastball or the changeup down off off the plate away. So I'm gonna go with the changeup. Okay. A shocking choice. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like I said, one in doubt, throw a changeup. Yeah. Especially when it's a really good one. High fly ball, right center field. Reed Johnson, Jason Hayward can't get it. It's a home run. A two run homer for Donovan Solano turns the game around for the Marlins. His first two big league homers and the first multi run inning game for Chris Medlin in forever. Well, try to go with the fastball away, and now that's a mistake. The first home run, yeah, it was a mistake in that it was a home run, but it was actually a pitch in off the plate almost. That pitch ended up right down the middle and certainly not where Med wanted to be. So two runs in this seventh inning. So try to go fastball away, and it leaked. And in Miami? That's maybe an out. Yeah, Dave Solano. Having a career night. To second. And handcuffed Douglas for a moment, but Dan stays with it and retires the side. Donovan Solano, I believe it was an 0-2 pitch. Rifles one into the seats in right center field his second big league homer his second homer of the night and the Marlins try to spoil an Atlanta party tonight. They lead 3 2 at the stretch. Runs as you see our Honda scoreboard. The Braves go to work in the last of the seventh with Dan Ugla, Brian McCann, and Andrelton Simmons. And they will not be facing Nate Evaldi, who departs after six innings, allowing two runs. We're in the teeth of this Marlins bullpen, Joe, a bullpen that was very impressive as far as the strikeouts were concerned when we last saw the Marlins down in Miami. Yeah, they'll just start lining them up now. These guys have come in just throwing a million miles an hour. Ramos 92 to 96. He's been in seven games so far. No record. Six innings, nine strikeouts against just one walk. 
mostly fastball curveball. Throws a cutter off his fastball. Led their double A club in saves. Three runs, five hits for the Marlins. Two runs, four hits for the Braves. Abla has one of those RBI hits. It came in the second inning. He brought home Chipper Jones. And walked his last time and had a good cut. Strike one. Dan kind of spinning out of the way of that one. Caught looking. One away in the seventh inning. And back to our trivia. We showed you on our AT&T Ubers trivia question. Chipper's one of two players all time to hit 200 or more homers in Atlanta. Who's the other player? Well, I'm going to go with Hank. Hank Murph. They, I mean, they seem like the obvious choices. I'm going to go Bob Horner. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a good one. I'll go with Ron Gant. That's my answer. And see, should have gone with my gut. Just seemed too obvious. It's, it's not Gretchen's MO. Murph is going to be very upset. I mentioned him. You did. You mentioned Dale Murphy, who was the answer with 205 Atlanta homers. Hank hit 190. Andrew was in there, so was Horner. Chipper and Murph. That's fitting. Two of them are in that category. Nine o'clock in Atlanta. The Marlins trying to spoil the fun tonight. Atlanta's magic number for a playoff spot is one. They led by one until Donovan Solano ripped an 0-2 pitch into the seats in right center in the top of the seventh inning. By the way, Ron Gant tied for fifth with 76 homers, tied with Daryl Evans. Oh, that was Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Beg your pardon. 76. And by the way, we want to congratulate our colleague Ron Gant. He's got a new gig. Ronnie will be one of the morning co hosts on Fox 5 here in Atlanta. Good day, Atlanta. The morning show. Congratulations. Gotta get to bed early. <laughs> that is an early call there. Three balls, two strikes. And McCann walks and represents the tying run. So, for those of you looking for a suitable gift for Ron, an alarm clock of three <laughs> might be just what the doctor ordered. One on one out for Anderton Simmons. He's played catch with Jose Reyes at shortstop. He was doubled up in the second. Rolled out in the fifth. One ball, no strikes. Let's see if Ramos pitches himself into trouble. He'd only walked one prior to this outing. Bit all over the place here. After some good pitches to Dan Ugla. Fly ball to left. Peterson will track this one down. 
And two are out. That will end the night for Chris Medlin. Freddy Gonzalez goes to his bench and calls on Lyle Overbay with McCann at first and two outs. And let's see what Ozzie Guillen does. He's going to go to his bullpen and set up a lefty lefty matchup. Dan Jennings was up and loosening for the fish. And he will come on to face Overbay or perhaps someone else in that Atlanta dugout. 3 2 Miami, a late lead tonight. by Georgia Power and by Ram Trucks. One on two outs for the Braves in the seventh inning. The Marlins lead by a 3-2 score. And after Miami leaves town, we've got the Mets coming in this weekend. It's a big series, and it's presented by Gas South. Standing room only for Friday night. A few tickets left for Saturday and Standing room as well on Sunday, the final home game of the regular season for the Braves. Get your tickets now by calling 800 745 3000. Dan Jennings is on in relief. Jeff Baker pinch hits for Overbay. And Jose Constanza pinch runs for Brian McCann. Fourth stint with the big league club for Jennings. He saw in his 15 innings, nine walks. Versus five strikeouts. Sometimes watching Brantley behind the plate, he looks like he's crossed up when he's not. That breaking ball looked like he kind of stabbed at it, like he thought a fastball was coming, but shouldn't be any trouble with signs with nobody on second. That's in for a called strike. Braves down to their last seventh inning strike. Jeff Baker's an interesting player for the Braves uh, looking forward to postseason in that he provides Freddy Gonzalez, a right hand bat off the bench, can do some things kind of like Matt Diaz. He can not only play on the infield, but he can play left field. And he's done so far, he's done a good job of he put the barrel of the bat on the ball. He's hit a lot of hard shots right at people. Had an RBI hit against the fish down there. 
this time of year too as you think about postseason play he has played in the postseason before that was with Colorado. Jeff's eighth major league season. And trying to make the Braves postseason roster should Atlanta make it. One ball two strikes. I think they would be in a position where they'd be probably more inclined to take an extra outfielder I would think because they're probably going to have to keep Martin in the mix and that shortstop in case something goes wrong there yeah. now with with uh, Yanish's injury so it might be something they're looking at going into the postseason. Baker swings and misses. Jennings takes care of Atlanta in the seventh. On we go to the eighth. One run game with the Marlins in front. 3 2. The hook for the loss at this point, but that's the story as we head to the eighth inning. Here's our game summary. Donovan Solano, the story of the game for Miami. He's the only guy that's really done any damage. They have five hits and he's got two big ones. Second inning, one out, launched this one, his first homer of the season, first major league homer into left field that gave him a one nothing lead. The Braves eventually fought back to lead two to one. And then in the seventh on an 0 2 pitch he got another fastball but this time to center his second big league homer his second and third RBIs of the night and the fish with a three to two lead Edlin out of the game and a new battery for the Braves David Ross is behind the plate and you see Eric O'Flaherty facing Gil Velasquez for the Marlins he's their eighth place hitter. Always a pleasure when Eric answers the AT&T call to the bullpen. Another terrific season for this Atlanta Relief Corps. Dating back to May 4th, that ERA is impressive, but dating back from May 4th to the present, his ERA is 0.78. Broken bat. One out. As we said, the Marlins might be a little shorthanded off the bench. Austin Kearns was battling a bad back up in their New York series, and he's going to grab a bat here with bases empty in the eighth inning tonight. He's suffering a bad back. Justin Ruggiano injured a shoulder in a diving attempt and a play in New York crashed into the wall missed a couple of games in New York and he's out of the lineup tonight. Ball one to Kearns.
Ugla had Kearns played perfectly. Two outs. Online now at FoxSportsSouth.com. It's Q&A time with Chipper Jones. Log on to hear the third baseman open up about his career and his final season. Find this interview and more about Chipper on FoxSportsSouth.com. Peterson 0 for 3. And 0 for his last 19. To right. Right at Jason. O'Flaherty continues his excellent bullpen work. And the top of the Atlanta order goes to work in the bottom of the eighth inning. Baseball is brought to you in part by Nissan, by Jameson Inn, by the Georgia Lottery, and by McDonald's. It's a 3-2 ball game. Miami's in front with the top of the order coming up for the Braves, whose magic number at the start of play tonight for a playoff berth stood at one. All Atlanta has to do is win this game, and they don't have to worry about the rest of the National League scoreboard, although... The Braves still feel they've got a chance to chase down the Nationals guys. Phillies were just batting a minute ago with bases loaded and one out and had a run in to make it six to three. So hopefully they'll be able to add to that lead. The Braves are going to have to bounce back though. If they want to have a chance to cut it to four. Yeah you always you always want to keep your eye on that top spot. While it might seem unlikely they certainly still mathematically have a chance and that's how they're going to play it and so they no longer do if that day comes. Well, here's the man that's garnered an awful lot of attention the last 48 hours on the radio circuit, and that's Heath Bell, the embattled Marlins closer pitching in the eighth inning tonight. During a Monday radio interview in Miami, Bell said the Marlins need a manager, quote, that everybody respects and looks up to. He sang a different tune on Tuesday. He said he was never criticizing Ozzie about his managerial style. Bell thought that Ozzie didn't tell him the whole story when he was yanked out of the closer role. And early in the year, Bell was frankly awful. He had an 8.47 ERA in his first 21 outings after signing the 
Very big contract to come from San Diego to the Marlins bullpen. And I don't know if his him talking about the lack of communication was over the fact that he's not the closer again. He was pulled from that role. He has pitched better. His 312 ERA since the All Star break is pretty good. But they've used other guys. Steve Ciszek is the guy that's been in that role recently. And give Bell credit. Earlier today, he did say he shouldn't have made the comments that he did. And he took responsibility for that, which certainly is respectable. But it does sum up the way the year's gone for <laughs> Miami. A lot of he said, he said stuff, and not much success. Two and two for Reed Johnson. Reads over three tonight, filling in for Michael Bourne, who's still out with that sore thumb. And will gladly take a walk if Bell wants to oblige. Full count. Vasquez, tough play, gloves, guns, and got him by a quarter step. One out. Nice play by Velasquez here. Got enough on the throw to win that one by a half a step. Yeah, we see Chipper make that play all the time and make it as well or better than anybody in the game. That was a nice player right there, especially with the situation that presents leading off the inning and wanting to get that lead off guy. That's a big play. Martin tripled with two outs in the third inning tonight. Marlins have left just one man on base. The Braves have stranded four. Tom, when I first saw this guy, he fell with you in New York. I thought he was just kind of a out of shape. Middle reliever mop up type guy, but he's made himself into quite a big league pitcher over the last several years. I ball Tomahawk to left by a Prado. Two outs. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he, he's always been one of those guys, and I say this not disrespecting me, but he, you know, he, he gives you that appearance. He looks like he's out of shape. He looks, you know, doesn't have the greatest appearance out there, but. He's always had decent stuff, and I, I just felt like in New York, in that atmosphere, with everything that was going on, that didn't fit his personality very well. And, and, and I know he and Rick Peterson clashed a little bit when they were there, so when he went out to San Diego, kind of got that fresh start that we talk about all the time in a much different environment. He thrived out there, so, you know, a little bit of an off year this year down here with the Marlins. We'll see how he bounces back next year if he's still a part of this team. Signed a three year, $27 million contract to move from San Diego to Miami. He's falling behind Jason Hayward, two balls, no strikes. And look who's standing on deck. The chipper has something special in store for us in the eighth inning tonight. Jason has to keep the inning alive for that chance to occur. One pitch away from doing that. How's he reminding his catcher to be careful here? Three and zero, oh, he might be swinging. He was, and Reyes at short makes the play. Bell works a perfect eighth inning. We go to the ninth. Miami leads Medlin in the Braves 3 2.
have the lead. Game two of the series here tomorrow night. Here are our Chevron probable starters. Left-hander Paul Mahalam goes for the Braves. Josh Johnson, big right-hander for the Marlins. Should be another good pitching matchup tomorrow night. And if you can't make it out to the ballpark, then stay home and listen to us. There you go. Third pitcher of the night for Atlanta is Craig Kimbrell. He answers the AT&T call to the bullpen with the two, three, and four hitters up for Miami. Craig was in two games against the Marlins down in Miami. Picked up two saves in those two outings. Two innings total, two hits, one strikeout. And a quick strike to Gorky Hernandez. Kimbrel's season has just been remarkable. Look at what he's done in his last 20 appearances. 42 strikeouts. <laughs> Almost looks like a misprint. And it's that kind of work, Tom, that some folks think will earn Craig Kimbrell serious consideration for the Cy Young Award this year in the National League. Well, he'll get serious consideration, no question about that. For a while there, I think he might have been the front runner. to his strikeout total by punching out Hernandez one out. Here's Reyes. Shoots a ball into shallow center field, and Reyes has a three hit game tonight. He's one of the guys, the only guy that got a hit off Craig down in Florida. And he is now five for six off of Craig Kimball. It's always that one guy, right? But to put it in perspective for Kimbrell, by my count, he's recorded 176 outs this year. 127 of them strikeouts. Incredible. Leas is running. Pitch out. Throw to second. He is toast. Two outs. Great call on the pitch out. Sometimes catchers get all excited when the pitch out is called and the runner actually goes and they don't put a good throw on. David Ross did. So Lee bats with the bases empty and two outs now. And a fly ball to right. Hayward has a little trouble with the auxiliary scoreboards. But Craig Kimbrell gets the Marlins out in the ninth. Stay tuned, folks. Chipper Jones leads things off. Last call for Atlanta down a run.
25,632, hoping Atlanta can rally in the ninth inning and earn a playoff spot tonight. Our night began with a special tribute to Chipper Jones. Hope you enjoyed the great work by the Braves live crew. As they talked about Chipper's soon to be Hall of Fame career. Perhaps another magical moment awaits us as he starts inning number nine tonight. He'll face former Brave Mike Dunn who comes on to try to close it out for Miami. You see his numbers for the year but he's the guy that came in and had a tough time against the Braves when they rallied in the start by Evaldi last week down there. Worked an inning in a third gave up a run. Remember Brian McCann hit a rocket off the deep left center field wall that tied the game. Well, it's a hard thrower. You got to make him throw strikes. In Chipper's case, I'm sure, make him throw strikes and at the same time look for a fit of a mistake in the zone early in the count that he can jump on. Vasquez guards the line at third as Chipper batting right handed digs in in the ninth. One ball, no strikes. That one got the inside edge. Said Tom can be just as he was there on that pitch all over the place, but he's really only walked one in his last five appearances, and that was an intentional walk. 28 walks in 43 and a third innings gives you hope in the ninth. Line drive right center field. That's going to split the gap. Chipper around first, digging for two. Here's the throw. It's not going to be nearly in time. Something out away from him where he could drop the barrel on it. Target was supposed to be inside and it wasn't. The pitch wasn't delivered there. Uh, I was more middle to middle in and the pitch chipper likes. Like you said, dropped the head on it, drove it into right center field, and just good hustle. Stretching that into a double. And Chipper can say to Robbie Alomar, move over. He ties Robbie Alomar with 2,724 hits and represents the tying run for Atlanta. Now Freddie Freeman hits. Big meeting on the mound. As you know, Freeman loves the first pitch. That one gets through. Chipper's on his way to third with nobody out. There's no way you can see that from second base as the runner as far as to how far this ball gets behind Brantley. So watch Freddie. Freddie's waving right away. Go, go, go. See Chipper frozen there for a second until Freddie started waving him. So it's there for the taking for the Braves if they can make some contact here. Ball, one strike. Chipper. 
Chipper's 90 feet away. Fly ball belted, center field deep. Swinger, yet you let the first one go by in the dirt. Then you're the guy that waves chipper to third on another one past the catcher. What do you see in that situation that lets you know that you can drive it? Uh, you know, I was just trying to look for a pitch to just get in the air. You know, it's, uh, I just wanted to get that guy in with a sack fly. I did not want to hit it on the ground. So, you know, you got to give me a faster right there, and I was able to get it out of here. What a difference a year makes. Last year, game 162, you spiked your helmet about 95 feet from the plate in the season was over. Now you're the guy putting the Braves in the postseason. Has that sunk in yet? Not yet. You know, I think when I get in that clubhouse, it's going to sink in, you know. It was a, you know, it's a, a little heartbreak last year, you know, having that happen, but I think, I think we're all good now. Get out of here. Go well, celebrate. Congratulations. Well, how about this turn of events, fellas? The Braves are headed to the postseason as Freddie Freeman launched one to the deepest part of the park. Fastball out away from him. Not a whole lot, unlike the ball that McCann hit off of Dunn down in Florida. But the guy who was part of that home run derby in batting practice today comes through with a winner. This place went crazy. It all started with Chipper Jones double in the ninth. And in this, his final go-around, Chipper Jones knows that all the ghosts of September 2011 are gone. The Braves are headed to the playoffs, either as the wild card or perhaps a division winner. As the celebrations beginning in the Atlanta locker room, the Braves are back in postseason play. And for the guys who've never been there before, Tommy, and there's a whole host of them on this Braves roster, J.C. Boscan, Jose Constanza, Freddie Freeman, Reed Johnson, Pasternick, Prado, Simmons, Ugla, Avilan, Delgado, Garen, Mahala, Martinez, Medlin, Miner, O'Flaherty, Sheets, and Tehran, all going to the playoffs for the very first time. Yeah, I know. There's no better feeling than that when you're able to... Sit around the clubhouse and spray that champagne for the first time, and you hope it's the first of many times for this postseason. But you know, going back to to Freddie Freeman there for a minute, I mean, what a what a great way for him to not only have his first walk off home run, but to do it in such grand fashion in, in a race. For anybody who wondered whether or not this team was over what happened last year, there should be no doubt anymore. They've had a phenomenal September. They've played their way into this situation now. They're going to continue to play it and try and get that division uh, title. And, and don't forget, don't lose it all, uh, get lost in all of this. That, oh, by the way, the Braves won for the 22nd time in a row when Chris Medlin was on the mound. Yeah, he is uh, taking off the hook for a loss. 
His streak still intact with consecutive wins. It's at 22. So uh, a lot of things happened on that one swing of the bat. And I love watching Freddie go to into home plate when he leaped into the arms of his teammates. That was a playoff leap and a beauty. And here is the final leap for Freddie Freeman. Let's not lose sight of this either, fellas. Washington's losing tonight. The Braves are already in the win column. If that score holds in Philadelphia, the Braves would be four back with eight games to play, and so they're not conceding anything quite yet. No, they're not conceding it. They're going to enjoy this. They're going to enjoy the opportunity that they presented themselves, which is to play in the postseason. That's what you play for, that you want to give yourself that opportunity. But absolutely, they're still gunning for that division, and, and they want to win that division, and they're definitely not giving up on that. That's beautiful right there. That's a, that's a powwow. I want to show you that leap again and, and look at the faces of the people at home plate. This is from behind everybody stacking up to greet Freddie. But now look at the faces right here. Look at Dan Ugla. Look at Jason Hayward. Chipper boxing out. Yeah, Chipper <laughs> is definitely going for the rebound. Those are we've never been to the playoffs before faces. Uh-huh. Wow. And quite obviously, that's our Toyota play of the game. Tom Hart, who just did that great interview with Freddie Freeman, is goggling up down in the Braves <laughs> locker room. He's going to get sound for us here in a few minutes. But let's talk a little further along, fellas, too. Not only first-time playoff opportunities for some of these Braves players, but I imagine sweet redemption for Freddie Gonzalez and his staff as well. Freddie was very honest in reflecting after... The Braves collapsed in September last year. He said it was tough leaving the house for a couple of months after the season ended so suddenly and dramatically for the Atlanta club last year. First time now as a major league manager, Freddy Gonzalez has managed a playoff club. Well, you know what? And kudos to him, too. I mean, look, there's no question that, that what happened last year, there's no question left to sting with a lot of people. And, and, and I agree with Freddie. When you go through something like that, it doesn't go away anytime soon. But he he righted the ship with these guys and, and led them and, and got them into this position. Tom Hart, take it away with Chipper Jones. It's Tom's first playoff appearance, too. He's got to get the right <laughs> microphone. He's got the wrong equipment down there. And he didn't have his goggles on. Well, I'm, I'm sure that some of that moisture had something to do with the mic he had. <laughs> Pretty good chance. Now we got him. Tom, go ahead. All right. I, I hate to break up the celebration, Chipper. It, it's been a while for you in the postseason, but let's forget about that right now. Walk me through that ninth inning. I don't know how to. It was, uh, it was all just a, a blur, you know. I mean, uh, Mike Dunn came in and, you know, came right at me. And uh, I was just trying to stay up the middle on the other way and uh, got a – Got a fastball, I was trying to hit out of the park, and I fisted it in the right center, and, uh, you know, moved to third on the on the wild pitch, and, man, Freddie Freeman, he'll never get a bigger hit than that one to send us to the postseason. You said earlier this season that Freddie Freeman was a guy who could hit third and take your spot for the rest of his career. What can a hit like that do to a guy's morale and boost? You know all about big postseason hits. Well... A hit like that does a wonders for a kid's confidence. We all know that we all know he can play and be productive, but uh, a hit like that could very well, you know, propel him to start him. I hate to say that you knew this moment was coming because of what happened last year, but your team put itself in a position to kind of be locked into the postseason. Has there been doubt? Was there been doubt? And what did tonight do? No, there was never any doubt. I mean, we we knew that last year was somewhat of a fluke. You know, we kind of got caught. You know, not really uh, knowing what to expect by a lot of these guys. And uh, they, took the, they took the attitude last year to try and hang on. This year we took the bull by the horns and we were like, you know, we were shooting for the stars. We're still shooting for the, for the division until they close us out. And uh, we'll let the wild card be a, a byproduct of finishing second, coming up short. But uh, we still got life. Of all the drama in tonight and it's waiting in the postseason, how in the world do you miss home plate? That's a good question. I was in between sliding and standing up. Nobody was telling me anything, and I thought I might have got a toe on it, but I, I, I wasn't willing to walk off to, to the dugout, so I figured I better go back and touch home plate. Can you talk about your feelings at this moment and what tonight means to you, 
your career, your decision to call it call it a career after this, yet still come through and get this team to the postseason? Well, it makes it all worth it. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happier for these for these guys. Ah, that's cold. I'm happier for these guys because they worked hard. Ah, 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 ah. I am so cold right now. Uh, anyway, I'm just happy for these guys that they, we had a goal coming out in spring training, and we've given ourselves an opportunity. That's that's the biggest thing. Congratulations. Thank you. He's cold and he's old, but it never gets old going to postseason play for Chipper Jones. Great job, Tom Hart. We'll get to locker room with some more interviews in a moment. But uh, how sweet must it be, Tommy, for Chipper announcing earlier this year this was his last go-round and the Braves get to the postseason. One more shot for a ring for Chipper this year, perhaps. Yeah, well, look, at it. We've, we've said it so many times, you can't ask for anything better than this. I mean, he's, he's announced it's his last year. He's come back. He's had a great year. Uh, I know part of the reason why he wanted to come back is not only because he thought he could still play, but there's a lot of unfinished business from last year, and there's no way he wanted to go out that way. So, you know, great for him that he's able to come back, have the productive year that he has. Great for the team that they're able to come back, erase what happened last year. Like I said, have a very strong September up to this point in time. And, and like Chipper said, they've played their way into this thing. They're not, they're not backing their way in. They're playing their way in, and they're, they're playing good baseball and should be in a good place. Chipper Jones and the Braves continue to celebrate down in the Atlanta locker room. Tom Hart standing by with Michael Bourne. All right, thanks with Braves All-Star Michael Bourne. Uh, you've been to the postseason just once before, early in your career with the Phillies. What do you think now that you guys are not only back, but back in such a dramatic way? Well, uh, man, we've been working all year, and uh, it's been a fun year for us. We had a disappointing end last year, but... Uh, you know, we came to spring training, training ready to play, man. Uh, from day one, we set out to, you know, set out to go out and play as hard as we can every game. And uh, we get to celebrate a little bit of it right now, you know. And uh, we just happy to get in the way we got in. We're free going deep like that. It was exciting. Uh, you know, we just hope this is just the beginning of it for us. You've been out a couple games with the thumb, so you had a prime view on the bench for Freeman's home run. What did you see? Well, I was coming in the pinch run, so I was thinking in my mind what, would I, what I was going to do next. So, you know, and uh, when I seen the ball come off the bat, I knew it was gone. You know, uh, when you see a lot of home runs for yourself on the side, on the field view, whatever it is, you start to know when they're gone, and I knew it was gone, man. He caught it flush, and, uh, you know, uh, we came ready to play tonight, man. And uh, we know we, we, was in, we was in a battle. They had a good pitch, in, uh, good pitch on their side, but we had one as well, and uh, we came out with the victory, and now we know we're in the playoffs, but we're not going to stop, man. We're going to try to, you know, we're going to try to get a, put some pressure on the Nationals, and uh, we'll see what we come out with. You said put some pressure on the Nationals. Division title still within reach for this team. Yes, it is. You know, that's the thing about it. You know, we celebrate tonight, of course, with, uh, with, uh, with, with due respect, but we know that we uh, – you know, the Nationals don't have an easy schedule ahead. You know, we have to we have to take care of our business. But it's not in our control. You know, we can't we can't control that. But we still gonna try to get get uh, play hard and get ready and get ready and get ready for the play. <laughs> All right, Mike. Congratulations. Way to go. Can't wait to see you back in the lineup, Chip. Thank you very much, Tom Hart. Michael Bourne and the Braves are headed to the playoffs on Freddie Freeman's walk-off homer in the bottom of the ninth inning. The celebration continues in the Atlanta locker room. The Braves are headed to the playoffs. And we'll have more right after this.